everybody. Good morning. I am Kelly Jackson, and this is Jamie. And welcome to Women Changing Our World. We <laughs> are so excited to be here on this gross rainy day, Ugh. and we hope to bring you a little bit of joy on this Monday morning. We have yes. um, two great interviews. We have amazing products to show uh. you. We have some funny things. Um, <laughs> but let's start off, Jamie. Uh, women in the news. So I was reading this article, and I really feel like we should do it. Okay. Um, there's this whole group of women yes. that are becoming wine fairies. Ah, so they're ah, dressing up like fairies, getting bottles of wine, writing sweet notes to people, and like leaving it on their such front door. Th- this Why is, is no one wine fairy me? Idea. I know. I So... I think that maybe you and I should be the wine fairies. Like, yes. we should go around, but we have to do it in costume. Like, I mean, full uh, fairy Would we ever suit. do anything when, <laughs> not in a costume, when we could wear a costume? We could get, like, a little fairy golf cart <laughs> and, like, drive around, and it's like, and then we dance up to the front door. I love it. We could pick, like, our favorite wines. That would be so fun. We could throw fairy dust, like, around the Glitter. Wines. And be like, try this Cabernet. <laughs> yes. And then love, we're just like, like, love women changing our world. Right. Imagine we get caught on everyone's ring. Like, we're just like, <laughs> just glittering your front like, door. You know we leave Let's you do one. that. I Let's, love okay, that. if you guys want us to wine fairy you, <laughs> let us know. Let us know. Post it in the comments if you want to be wine fairied. Yeah. We have to get the costume. Oh, but we're getting that. I have, well, <laughs> surprisingly, I have two girls. Of course, I have enough fairy wings for everybody in the studio. <laughs> Judah. I have even a pair for Judah. That's cute. I know. Okay. Okay. So we have a big show, so we got to kind of speed through some of this intro stuff. Really? But I do not want to forget um, the Humane Society. Yeah. The cat. Judah, Aww. do you mind putting up the picture of the cat? The kitty kitty. The cat is on screen. Okay. Aww. Jamie, do you want to tell us about this cat? Um, you can you can read it. Tell us about a okay. little bit about the cat. Um, hold on. Well, I wasn't prepared for that because you <laughs> usually do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I will tell you about that in a second. Um, not very organized today, Jamie. <laughs> the Humane Society. Cat. Okay, here we Hold go. On. You got it? Yes, I think. Um, her name is Charlotte. Charlotte. Yeah. She's very sweet and affectionate five-year-old cat. She's currently living in a foster home and doing very well. She does have some medical conditions, um, but that'll be explained if you're like interested yeah. in this cat. She needs to go to an indoor home only without other cats or cats, um, who share her medical condition. If interested, oh, apply. I love her. This she's cat the, is like the cutest she's cat. She's the cutest. You know I what's really, really like funny? It. I remember. So if you visit the website, get out there. There's so many cool, like dogs. They have puppies. They have kittens. And they, they just got all those dogs from Louisiana and Texas ahead yes. of the hurricane. Yes. They brought them here. So like displaced animals yes. in those flooded areas could have a safe place to go. Um, and then they also have like 37 dogs from a, like a hoarding situation. Yes. So guys... If you are looking for a lovely companion, yes. cat or dog, um, please visit the Albemarle Humane Society. Yes. They are amazing. They take good care of their pets. Um, I their sent adoption them an email. fees are low. And Jamie, you I called. I sent them an email the other day. I did. There's a little black and white dog. There's actually two of them that I really like. We'll make it, our, we'll make it like another mascot for our show. I thought that it could be like a foster. Like we could maybe foster him like as he, if he was like in a hoarding situation and stuff, just coming home to like hang out Aww. with Bronx and Chloe. I know. Do you know, here's a funny story. I, there oh, no. is a, a, I guess a pet store, if you want to call it. Oh, a I, pet store? I think, <laughs> it, do they sounds, have those anymore? It sounds really gross when you say it. Like a pet store. Like it's like, imagine a store of like chameleons and fish. Yes, did like you? Dog. We, I they remember. used to have those in the mall. Yes, Where like, you could go in and like pet the puppies. Yes, and my yes. parents were always like, you're not going in that store. Yes. It's so weird, actually. I haven't thought about it until you just said that. But that is really gross that you like, go into a store of caged animals it's to, like, worse. tap them or, like, tap on the tank. Yeah. But so there's this pet store in Stanton. And um, Ryan and I were, like, I forget why we were there. But, like, so we go in. And there's all these, like, amazing, cute puppies. Like, every kind. Like, is that legal? Behind the glass, yes. And, like, so they say, like, they're bre- Like, they don't, they're not from a puppy mill, like, all these things. But there's all these pets. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the craziest part was, so we were, like, oh, my God, this is, like, amazing. And they were, like, we have great financing options available. Finance your dog? They were, like, great financing options, like, great rates. So if you consider getting a puppy, you can finance your puppy. And I looked at Ryan, and I was, like, Mm. isn't it really weird? And then, like, what if you get get behind on payments? Like, do they knock, and they're, like, we're repoing skizzles. (laughs) Like, do they repo the dog? Like, how does that work if you get behind on payments? You're, like, oh, I finally paid off cuddles. (laughs) Oh, thank God. (laughs) How does that work? I don't know. I didn't think pet stores were legal. No, yes, 
they okay. are definitely legal. I don't know. And you, can, and you can find it. I'm saying adopt. <laughs> Uh, Unless definitely. you need like a special breed for like medical reasons. Right. Adopt your pet, guys. <laughs> Please. Adopt yeah, do pet. not finance. No. Do not finance a dog. No, Jamie, I'm looking at your coffee and I'm very jealous of your coffee this morning. Um, because, you know, I go to bed early. Yes. Like I go to bed like, like seven between. I know that it's when it's getting <laughs> towards 7 p.m. I'm like, I got to be like, if I need to, Kelly, I got to wrap it up now. Because yes. it's getting close to that window. Right. Like I'm like an 8, 830 to better. Max. But I wake up early. You do. You like sleep until like noon. Oh my God. I can't Um, like. Yeah. Anyway, I stayed up till midnight last night. I can't even believe you made it here today. Like I I, I can't even imagine. I can't either. Um, Because, you know, we have um, Joanna Garten on the show today. We're going to Skype her in just a second. Um, The book was amazing. I'm so excited to talk to her. Um, But so then I went down this rabbit hole of Everest documentaries. I, I told you. So, like, I'd seen the movie before, like, the one that came out in, like, 2015, and yes. I'd seen, like, the IMAX documentary that yep. was, like, in the 90s. So then yes. I was, like, just, like, oh, I'm going to do a little bit more research, yada, yada. Um, so then I stayed up, like, watching this series documentary on Everest. So I am fully prepared for this interview. Yeah. I'm a little sleepy. I might yeah. need a nap today. But um, it was worth it. And it's I'm incredible. so fascinated. I mean, I'm f- I, me too. I've been fascinated with Everest. I have seen so many documentaries. And what's cool, so Joanna, you know, wrote this book that Kelly and I both read. We've been telling you about it. It's great. Um, but I also got a chance to talk to Mark from Mountain Madness. So if you've seen the movie Everest, you know that there were like these two yeah. climbing. And I got to talk to Mark and he gave me lots of notes. What an amazing guy and what an inspiration what an inspiration yeah, okay, he was. Guys, we're getting ready to Skype her in just a second. So like and share the yes, show. You are like not going to want to miss this interview. Um, and we're giving away books today, right? We are. Okay, how about for the first 10 people that like and share the show, Yeah. Um, you will get a free book. Yeah. Edge of the map. Yes. It's amazing. amazing. You will love it. Like it and share it right now. Yes. Rick, my dad, you've already read the book and you loved it. So you can also like and share, but we will not send you a second copy. <laughs> Yes, that's a great idea. Right, so, so Judah, we're ready. Should we're we get ready. into it? I, I mean, I'm so excited. Okay, and Jamie. Here we go. You talk so much. I'm doing, oh my God. Like, what? you have to let me ask some questions too. Okay. And we got to keep an eye on the time. What because this interview could go for like five hours. What are you trying sure. to say that no. I talk too much? Oh, is she there? Nope, hang on. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. We'll get her back in just a second. But yeah, but Jamie. Oh, Stephanie, Stephanie. you got a book, Stephanie. Uh, You're going to love it. Stephanie, as I'm calling Joanna. You Stephanie, are going to like it so much. I have been meaning to congratulate you on the birth of your grandchild. That is the most gorgeous little baby. Congratulations. I'm going to make you a baby blanket. I, I love you. Congratulations to you and Corinne. <gasps> Hi. There she is. is. We are so, so, so excited to have you on. Thank you so much for taking the time to tell us about how amazing you are and about this amazing woman, Chris, in this book. Um, and we like have so much to get to. So if you could first please introduce yourself, tell us who you are, um, and tell us why you are so amazing. Perfect. Okay. There's so much more to you. Like, there's so, like, I could, like, go on forever. I'll get the bio. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. And you are an author. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Yes. Be careful. Borderline stalker. <laughs> um, okay, so tell us, okay. uh, can you give us, for the people who have not read it, because Jamie and I have obviously already read it, um, can you give us a quick rundown of your book? And who is it about? How did you start writing it? Why did you start writing it? Just give us all the deets. Oh, that's perfect. Jamie's great about that. Yeah, I'm really good at that. Oh, hey, um, Wait, just pause for a sec, because I don't, we, so people can't hear you. So hold on just for a real quick sec for a technical difficulty, and we will figure that out. Does she have her mic on? Yeah, you, she, I can hear Do you her. have your mic on? We, yeah, we can hear her. The list, the viewers can't hear She doesn't, I don't think she has it on her end. Is there a way that she can turn it? How do you turn it on from her end? Do you see a microphone button, Joanna? Hmm. 
Hmm. And they saying people are saying they can't see her either, Judah. That's okay. We're going to figure it out. We have all day. I mean, literally, Jamie and I um, <laughs> gonna just it. sit and talk to each other all day anyway. So, I mean, we come up with crazy stories. Um, but I'm showing your book. You guys need to read it. Um, I'll kind of fill in some gaps here while we figure out the technical yeah. difficulties. Um, so this book is about um, the most famous, most amazing woman climber, Christine Boscroft. Um, and she had a very tragic life. And I can say that because at the beginning, you start the book at essentially the end of her story, um, which I think is you know, yeah. fascinating. Hang on, Kelly. Hang on one second. Joanna, I'm going to hang up and call you right back again and see if the connection will get fixed. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll call you right back. So hang on. I'm going to call you right back. I'm going to hang up. Okay. Okay. All right. So in the meantime, so she starts this book at the end of Chris's life. They call her Chris in the right. book. Right. Yes, Chris. Um, and ne- the... Joanna is not, she's an outdoorsy person, but not necessarily like, a, she's not climbing Everest herself. Okay, let's see. Is she back? She is back. Judah, can you? Can we hear now? Can you guys? All of our watchers, can you guys hear now? I'm still not seeing her on video. Let me. That's okay. We'll just keep plugging away for a second. Everybody watching, thank you so much for being so patient. Sometimes the technical things um, get a little messy but I know you guys want to hear her, so we're going to get her on um, as soon as we can. So uh, in the meantime, so Christine, Chris. Yes, Chris. Um, what? We've got her. Good. Yay, okay. we got you. Yay! And we're hey. back. We're live all over again. We're, we're going to just over again. redo. This is great. Okay. More time so, with you. Okay. I'm super excited. Second time's the charm. Okay. okay. Second time. So Joanna, thank you for coming on the show. Let's like restart. <laughs> Tell us who you are, what you do, and why you are so, like, crazy amazing, and why Jamie and I love you so much. Oh, my gosh. You guys are so crazy. Happy Monday morning. Happy Monday! <laughs> oh, yeah, you haven't even seen anything. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Keep in mind, I'm in Denver, so I'm two hours behind you drinking my coffee. Yeah. Hi, you guys. I'm Joanna Garten. I'm an author, and I live in Denver, and I have just published my second book, which is called Edge of the Map, and it's about an unbelievable American female mountaineer named Christine Boscoff. And what inspired you to write this book? Because, you know, we've talked, you know, a little bit before, and I've a little Facebook stalked you a little bit. Um, so I know you're kind of outdoorsy, but you don't, you're not a climber, are you? No, no, I'm not a climber. The connection to the book is that this incredible woman, Christine, was from the same hometown as me. We were about th- we were about three years apart in age, and we- Which is wild. And so what I loved in the book is not only do I love the pictures, because I think that pictures of a book, like to place stuff is always great. Um, But the map in the front of the book, there's this map. And I cannot tell you how many times I reference the map. Because when you're talking about all these places that are all over the world, it's so hard to kind of understand where they are relative to one another. So I looked at this map all the time. But one of the coolest things I think of the book is that you have Chris's journal. So mm-hmm. you have... The, How did you get her journal? So that is my question. Because I, that's what I love, that the story comes alive through really... Like, the story is really from, like, Chris's perspective almost, right? Because you get those feelings. So how yeah. did you get the journals? Yeah, yeah. So a little bit more of the backstory. So my mother, who's also a journalist and a writer, wanted to write this book. And so she became friends with Christine's mom during that period where Chris and her climbing partner, Charlie, were missing and kind of learned all about Chris's life and befriended her mom and went on to spend about 10 years working on this book. And then when my mom was unable to continue, she passed off the project to me. And so then I kind of inherited this very sweet friendship with Chris's mom. And at one point while I was researching and writing, her mom said, 
do you want all of Chris's journals? Wow. Oh my, I like, I have chills. Like I know. I, I know. I know. And so you guys, at first, when she said that, I said, I, I just can't. I can't because that feels so oh, personal, yes. right? right? But then on the other so, side of you is like, I have to have them because I need to know like what's happening. Right. You need to know what's in them. You're a hundred percent. Right. I know. I know. So the first time she asked me, I could tell that she was kind of like, do you think these would help? Do you want them? But she was a little bit hesitant. And so I said, no, no, I don't need them. And then six months later, after we got to know each other more and became very close, she said, you really need to have these now. And so I did. I know. And so I took this whole box of journals, and there were probably 20. And there were also journals of her husband, Keith, Christine's husband, Keith. Oh, interesting. And so it was just kind of this amazing process of going through journals, reading all sorts of stuff. You know, a lot of stuff I obviously didn't include for many different reasons. It really does bring the story oh, alive. Okay, so for people, because people are obviously watching that have not read the book, right? Not including Jamie and I, and not including my dad, who like right. was obsessed with the book. He read it in like two days. Um, can oh. you start us kind of from the beginning of Chris's life? That's what you really call her more in the book, um, and kind of walk us through who she is, how she started, and kind of the chronological order of her story. Yes, I can. Okay, so you already knew she grew up in Appleton, right. Wisconsin, regular Midwest girl. She went to University of Milwaukee and she studied aerospace engineering. And this was like in the late 80s, early 90s. So that was pretty unique for a woman from Appleton, girl from Appleton. She then graduated and went to Atlanta where she worked at Lockheed Martin and she led teams of men developing digital systems for like the C-130. Wow. So that in and of itself was already pretty amazing. And at that time when she was in Atlanta, she became very interested in climbing. She met a guy named Keith Boskoff, who would later become her husband. And Keith introduced her to climbing. They got married. They started climbing all over the world. And that was around 1995, 1996. And in 1996, there was a huge mountaineering disaster on Mount Everest. And a lot of your viewers and listeners may yes. remember that because it was chronicled in Into Thin Air by John yes, Krakauer. which is also a, a wild ride of a book. Yes. Totally, totally, totally wild ride. So the owner of a guiding company called Mountain Madness was a guy named Scott Fisher, and he died in 1996 on that mountaineering disaster on Mount yes. Everest. Bought his mountaineering company. They bought Mountain Madness, which is based in Seattle, and they moved out to Seattle. And she kept climbing, uh, and then off we go. That's so, as far as I'm going right now. I can keep going. No, no. You want. Well, listen, we we want you all day. Like we're going to extend the length of our show because you are like so amazing. So everyone like and share, so everyone can hear what you're saying. So for people who are not climbers, I am not a climber. Um, so what do these climbing companies do? Like, do they just take people up to ever? Like, what is that? What is a climbing company? Mm -hmm. So a climbing company or a guiding company, they have mountain guides who take people on climbs all over the world or right in your backyard. So Mountain Madness, the company in Seattle that Chris ran, takes takes people to the Cascades, which are just right there, or they take people who want to climb Everest or K2 or people who want to just trek as far as base camp at Mount Everest or K2. They also have unbelievable hikes like in Scotland and South America for people who are interested in kind of the cultural aspect. They kind of pair that with biking as well as hiking. So you can kind of do all sorts of different levels of hiking and climbing. It's not just if you want to go to right. K2 or Mount So I'm also going to kind of jump in and, and tell kind of like every, the viewers that – you have to remember that at the time that Chris was climbing, there weren't many women that were climbing. So this was a male dominated sport that was because, you know, climbing is, is hard. So people thought of it as like men are stronger, men are bigger, men can, women shouldn't be doing this. When Chris started climbing, she became good so fast. Like she was like these 8,000 meter peaks, like to still hold that title of summoning six of the world's highest peaks till today is so incredible. Like you can imagine that it, it happened so fast for her and she was so good at it that people all over the world were like, who is this woman? 
How is this woman doing this? And now her taking over a climbing, you know, a, a climbing company like Mountain Madness, who was huge, you know, at the time, like well known. You know, I asked Mark too from Mountain Madness, like at the time, where people like, who is this late? Who is this chick taking over? Like, what does she think she's doing? <laughs> And that, and he, you know, said that's absolutely half the people were like, oh my God, she had paid her dues. She there, she's the best, like the best woman climber there ever was. And then you had that boys club that was like, oh, that chick is going to take me up Everest. I don't like it one bit, you know, like you have that stuff. So it was, so wasn't it so incredible like for Chris. And so in her journals, did she ever talk about that? Yes, she did. She did talk a little bit about that. You know, as I sort of discuss in the book, she never wanted her gender to define her accomplishments. And she was just very, very humble, which is part of the reason we now, like, people still don't know who she is and why I wanted to write this book. But she did talk a little bit in her journals about how ego-driven that world could be for her and how that was very difficult and how oftentimes it would feel very boys clubby And she would feel left out or people would comment about her looks as opposed to her accomplishments because she was quite beautiful. beautiful. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And so that was always a little push pull. Yeah. Okay. So then what happened next in her story? So they buy this climbing company. So then what? Mm -hmm. So then what? Okay. So now I don't want to give away too many spoilers, right? You guys? Not too many, but give us the good juicy ones. (laughs) Okay. So Chris and Keith bought the climbing company. She went on to summit six 8,000 meter peaks. She ended up running Mountain Madness all by herself. Sort of halfway through the story, we lose Keith, and I won't go into too many details about that. She ran Mountain Madness all by herself. And then she partnered with a guy named Charlie Fowler, who was a prolific rock climber based in uh, Telluride, but actually from Virginia. I don't know if you... Remember that from the book? I didn't. I didn't remember that. He grew up in Virginia. So she and Charlie sort of started climbing slash dating together. And he was a pretty cute guy. He was a pretty cute guy. From Telluride? Have you ever been to Telluride? They have cute guys in Telluride. He was like this like famous rock climber. He was like doing the thing. Everyone wanted to climb with Charlie. And like, here's Chris, this beautiful lady. Like they were like, they were like it. Like they were like like the the it climbing couple. They were. Okay, go on, Joanna, tell us more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes, they were a power couple, but the thing was, they weren't really into all the bravado, and they didn't really want all the publicity. They just kind of were in this because they loved it, and they didn't want to do all that right. stuff that kind of come with being at the top of your sport. So that's what made them really special and endearing and wonderful. So in 2006, Charlie and Chris went to Western China. They had started to climb in places around the world that were unexplored and unknown, as opposed to going to these big 8,000 meter peaks with hundreds of other people. They wanted to kind of go off the grid a little bit. And so they went to Western Sichuan province and they went to an area called the Genyan region, the Genyan Valley. Uh, And they didn't leave tons and tons of detail with many people as they probably should have about where they were going. And they went missing. They went missing. And so they did not arrive on their flight scheduled back to the United States right before Christmas 2006. And then a big search and uh, recovery slash rescue mission was launched when they went missing. And so I, this, I was telling you. Like, what do you do as a family member? Right? So, like, like when my, my dad's a hiker, um, likes to hike, and I'm always like, keep on your GPS and tell us what trail you're going on in case you don't come back. But, like, back then, like, they didn't have kind of that, like, GPS tracking, and they didn't tell people where they were really going, right? <clears throat> yeah, yes and no. They had sent a couple emails okay. to Mountain Madness um, saying kind of the general area where they were going. Um, but by the time they were discovered to have been missing, a month had passed. Ugh. So then it was a real scramble to kind of go back through all of those emails and sort of retrace their stuff. Yeah, and it was, you know, we always talk about, like, I know, like, you have, like, gone down, like we say, like, this rabbit hole of climbing. And why? Why do people do this? What what drives someone to, like, want to go climb in the freezing cold and lose fingers and toes and maybe die? Like, what, what, yeah, tell us what that. What is it? You know, like, what do you think? Like, what's that? 
what's that drive? What is it that takes people yeah. down this path? Okay. So this is really interesting because I kind of came into the book with the same question. Like I didn't really understand what it was that could have people put themselves at such incredible risk or I like to say perceived risk because it isn't always that, right. you know, it isn't always that risky, but sometimes it really is perceived as risky. So the way that I like to talk about this is everybody in life, we all should be, I should say, we all should be so lucky to have a passion, something that we can't imagine not doing or practicing or having. And it looks different for everybody, right? It's either parenting or fostering animals or worshiping God or, you know, whatever it might be, gardening, yoga, running. And so for mountaineers and climbers, this is their passion. And they cannot imagine what life would be like without this. And that is what drives yeah. them. So because yeah. it's got this level of risk, people sort of feel entitled to judge the sport, but really they're just following what they love yeah. to do. Right. So in, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong. So was it your mom who started you down this rabbit hole with research? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. She began working on this book and the research right after Chris's remains were brought home. It's not a, it's not a spoiler that you all know right. as readers that Charlie did not survive. They died in avalanche. Uh, but my mom, as she kind of dug into the story with Christine's mom during that time, she realized this needs to be a book. The story needs to be told. And I love so that it's like, it's like one mom to another. Like you guys are so similar in age. It's like one mom to another, like putting your mom, like, you know, putting your almost like your own daughter in that place. Like what would she have done? And so when I spoke to Mark from Mountain Madness, we were talking about that time because I said to Mark, you know, what was it like? Chris goes missing. What happened? Like, were you losing your mind? Were you freaking out? What was going on? And he was like, you know, because remember, this is some years ago. And I said, imagine like you're working in an office oh. and someone is, is out there. You don't know where they are. It's freezing cold. What did you do? And Mark, what he said was he said, it was, it was so hard at the time because remember, they're in China. They're in a completely different country. So there's laws, there's, there's things. He was like, it was, it was more, he said at the time, frustrating because it's not like you can, like, you know, we didn't have Facebook. You're going on and trying to find your loved one. Right. Everyone's, it's a remote part of China that it was, it was hard to get to. And he said, thank God they had someone, um, I think you wrote his name in the book, who was on the ground during that time in China and he helped facilitate the search. Um, but Mark also lived through not only the death of Christine and Charlie, but also the death of Scott Fisher, who all of them had climbed with many years prior. So, you know, Mark had had these experiences and like, I just think it was such an emotional thing because it's been, you know, he's been at Mount Madness for 23 years and Christine right. was, he did, and he also said, he said, Christine was just so amazing. She had that engineering mind. Like she was an engineer by heart, which I think probably like, do you agree that maybe helped her, you know, like navigate these climbs? Like she was not only good at climbing, she was fast. She was fast at navigating these amazing peaks. And that's why people climb with her. So like as an engineer, do you think that that's what helped her like get these routes and do it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, she was fast. She had an engineering mind. And she was really good at altitude, she, which not everybody right. is. Yeah. She could, you know how people, right. so you have to acclimatize. Like if people don't know this. So when you're high, climbing these 8,000 meter peaks, right. you acclimatize as you go up. And you have to like stay. Or you, what did you get? Like altitude sickness and like pulmonary, pulmonary edema. Edema. So, but Chris would just head for the hills. Like Chris was like, and all what? these people were like, Chris, you have to acclimatize. She was like, no, I'm fine. Like she would be able, like where that people are insane. like, <gasps> like at the top of the mountain, Chris is just like, I can breathe fine. <laughs> Hanging out, like waiting. So she was fast. She was good. At, she was like, I mean, like she was, talk about a, a badass. Trick. Okay. So here's the question. Yeah. So as I was searching and also going down this crazy TV rabbit hole of Everest and climbing, every uh -huh. documentary and every movie that I watched or found was not about a woman climber. Why is there no movie or documentary or, or something made about Chris? Why is that? Her story is way fascinating. It's way fascinating. And hopefully we can change that. Hopefully someday there will be a Netflix series or an Amazon series or a feature film on this because I think it, the book translates well to oh my film. God, yes. I think so too. 
Okay, whoever yeah. is in the mood to produce an awesome movie about a badass woman climber, um, reach out to Joanna because I want to watch that series. Whatever channel yeah. it's on, I want to watch it. So we're getting some questions yeah. in now. Um, Joy Jackson in Texas is watching. She said, did writing the book inspire you to start hiking or mountain climbing? Oh my gosh. Okay. So I live in Colorado, so I do get into the mountains a fair amount, but I have to say after writing this book, I'm a hundred percent less inclined to go climb an 8,000 meter peak than I was before I started writing the book because I understand the level of risk so much And so more. Joanna, did you go, you went in the book to China, right? Like you went I up did. to the monastery. Yeah. So right. what was it like? to almost like walk Chris's path, like to see where she was on that day when she and Charlie went climbing, to talk to the monks that had seen it. Like, was it spiritual for you to be like in that place? Oh yes, absolutely. It was emotional and life-changing and transformative. I hope that it really influenced the power of those last few chapters of the book. The fact that the author had actually been in those spaces and it really helped me understand why climbers and mountaineers do what they do because there are just places in the world of untold beauty and magic. And this was one of them. It's one of the few places in the world where I really felt a sense of peace and being and spirituality and God or whatever you want to think of as God. So yes, it was really, really quite magical. It like magical. gives me chills to think about it. Like I really am just like, I can't imagine just... No, and I think, you oh. know, I think you did such an amazing job oh. writing this book of like uh -oh. telling the real story and true life of her. And I lost my son. Did you lose us? Oh, you lost us again. Judah, oh, she lost I've us. Her, I've got her yeah. right here. One of these bad boys in. Okay. Well, I'll keep talking, and you yeah. just give Jamie a thumbs up when. Um, can you hear, you can hear okay. us again? Okay. Now okay. I can hear you. I um, lost for a second, but I put. My but I think on. you did such an amazing job in this book, and it wasn't all doom and gloom. I think it was a perfect mix of like truth of a life story, um, excitement, adventure a little bit of love story, a little bit of sadness. It had like a little bit of everything in it. Um, yeah, do you think yeah. you will write another book um, about climbing or about anything else? Are you working on anything? I'm not working on anything now, but I'm definitely listening and collecting stories from people and trying to get ideas for my next book. And so I will say that I'm very interested in stories of the outdoors and of women in the outdoors. So I think I can see myself writing another book on that sort of topic in that genre. Interesting. So sure. on that note, and then we'll get back to you. Um, did you watch the Eco Challenge race on Amazon? No. Oh. Okay. No, I yes. didn't. Should I? So it's called the world's toughest race. It's it's like kind of similar to like people who climb. So these people race nonstop, twenty four hours a day for ten days, like across these crazy countries. They're like biking, they're hiking, they're climbing, they're rafting. So if you need some inspiration, um, check that out because those people are insane. Yes. Okay. Um, so at the end of the book, you kind of s tell us a little bit about your family and Chris's family. Um, can yeah. you tell us, like, are you still talking? Are you guys still friends? Kind of what is your relationship with her family now? Yes. Oh, gosh. Well, this is such a sweet part of the story, right? Because the book originally was my mom's. And she worked very hard with Christine's mom in terms of like having conversations and talking about the life of Chris for many, many years. And that friendship was sort of passed off to me when I started working on the book. And so, yes, we are still very dear friends. Christine's mom is 94 oh years God. old. She was 80 years old when Chris passed. And she's now 94. She lives in a retirement home in Appleton. And I call her like once a month. And I see her when I go home to Wisconsin in the summer. And so, yeah, it's very sweet. I mean, it's almost in a way like I have a second right. mother. And like she has right. a daughter. Which is, so. that's like, I, I love that. It's really, and so just one last question. So I, um, so I lost my mom back in 2013. And I, do you feel like a sense of like, of fulfillment, like working on this book for your mother, like when you ended the book, was it almost like, like a closure for you and your mom that yeah. it was like, 
she had this amazing thing that she was passionate about and you finished that for her? hundred percent. Like I can't, hundred percent. Like, isn't that like, I love crying. And I bet it, it brought you guys it so is. much closer together. Like the <sighs> book, the story was important to share. The relationship with your mother kind of comes through and the relationship with Chris's mother. Um, this was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for Joanna, coming on the show. If you, you guys, you. guys get this book. I promise you will love it. Even if you not, are not into like hiking or climbing, it's an adventure book. It's a love story yeah. book. It's a it's sad book. History. It's a happy book. Um, we recommend it a thousand yeah. percent. And when you guys like and you share the show today, we're going to give away 10 We have already so many people liking and sharing the show. Joanna's book. Yes. So Joanna, many people. I love you so much. I love you I so much. Cannot wait <laughs> to. We have to keep in touch and let us know what you're working on. Okay. Um, we are gonna share this book with everyone we know. It was such a joy to read. And we're gonna we're gonna it's, like set, just, set or start a petition to make it into a movie. Yes, we let's need do to that. Get you on Netflix. Yes. And yes, all film and TV producers, please read, read the, the book. book. All book clubs. Also, oh. this is a great book for book yes. clubs. Yes. Because I'm talking to book clubs when they finish it. I do virtual book club presentations. <gasps> So, and, yes. and what a what a tremendous like gift that you gave to Chris. Like yeah. really what and a her tremendous mother, everybody. thing. Yeah, what that you did. Yes. But let's stay in touch. Please, 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 let's stay in touch. Okay. Um and if you start writing a new book or we um yeah. get you a, a a movie deal, let us visit the set. Okay. Yeah, visit the set. <laughs> okay. Bye Joanna, we love you. I don't want you to go. Don't go. I love you. Bye. 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 Have the best day ever. Thank you. Thank you. So many people are sharing the show. I can't even say all these names. But uh -huh. Jessica Malloy, thank you for sharing. Alex Butterfield, thank you for sharing. Krista Jackson, thank you for sharing. Um, so many. We're, we can't get to all the names. Um, so anyway, what, that was such an amazing interview. I can't, like... Could you imagine? Okay, but listen. One thing I did want to discuss, but, you know, we, we only do like an hour and a half show. Yeah. So I'm watching these documentaries and all these men climbing. Um... Some of them, I think, are there for the right reasons, but I think some of these men in these documentaries that I'm watching are just there to kind of, like, say they did it. Like, they're not true climbers. Like, people are just paying $40,000 to hire right. these experts in Everest to, like, drag them up the mountain with these Sherpas, so and that is not what Chris was. We did not even, like, get a chance to even talk to Joanna about this or touch on this about the commercialization of climbing. Um, like, just like you're saying, that's exactly true. There are tons of people who are saying, I have a ton of money. I'm going to get up to Everest and touch the Just top to say I did In it. my North Face right. onesie or whatever you hey, wear. Hey, North Face, we do like you, though. Yeah, we do like you, North Face. I'd, I'd wear the onesie. And if, you, <laughs> if you paid me 100 grand, I'm going up there, too. Just saying, North Face. But it's like people do that. And, you know, when I was talking to Mark, who's now the owner of Mountain right. Madness, because he took it over when Christine passed away, um, he said, he goes, you know, we don't... He, they don't really do much of Everest anymore. He said the real true beauty of the mountains is getting out and exploring these different places that haven't been touched. Right. You could go to a mountain that's right across from Everest that might be 10 feet lower, but maybe the view is like different. You know, he, they're really all about getting people outdoors and just exploring what that is and kind of becoming one. And the commercialization, he said, is a crazy real thing. That it's, but he did give me a fact. Do you know? Guess how much it costs? So, to hike up Everest now, he said, I think it's like 60, let's say it's $60,000, right? Okay. Do you know there has been no inflation in like the past 15 years? Like, it hasn't, the prices haven't changed at all. Interesting. Which you would think that if years ago it was $60,000, now it would be one hundred and fifty. Right. Okay. I hate to fun. change topics because you and I could chit-chat about this all day, but we have another interview to get to. We so have products to get to. We have funny things to get to. And we're, we only have like 20 minutes left. And I want to say thank Let's say thank yes. you to Mark from Mountain Madness. Um, what a pleasure it was to talk to him. Yes. I mean, it was in crazy. Joanna, your book is incredible. Um, and, and so I told Mark that we were going to come to base camp, so... Forgot to tell you that, Kelly. Right. Signed you up. I told yeah. Mark. But hey, that everybody that's liking and sharing the show, thank you so much. Thank We're going to get the top 10 people, and um, we'll private message you, and we will send you a copy of this amazing book. So, okay, should we do our next interview? I just love I just want to cry. I know it. Okay. 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 Judah, yeah. if Melissa? you could get Melissa on, that would know, be it's awesome. It's not Judah. It's Jamie. Jamie oh, is sorry, getting Jamie. her on. I Jamie. know. You know, Judah gets a lot of the credit here. Just Judah deserves a lot of Hold the credit. Hold on. I'm like Judah Jr. <laughs> Judah Jr. Pull up Melissa. All right, okay. Kelly, I'm on it. Okay, let's do Melissa. 
Should I put on? I could do like a Judah like mustache. Like, um, that would be funny. Judah why Jr. why wouldn't you? Uh, hello, Melissa. It's Judah Let's Jr. Yeah. Are you there? <laughs> Did we get Melissa on? Hi, Melissa. Judah Jr. No, I'm Jamie. I'm just kidding. Nice How to are meet you? you? Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on. We are so excited to um, talk about your initiative. So tell us who you are, um, what you do, and what you are doing to change the world because you're doing so many great things. <laughs> well, my name is Melissa Charles. Um, I live in Charlottesville, although I've had the fortune of living in lots of different places. I call Charlottesville my home. Um, I do a lot of different things. Um, but the reason I'm here today is to talk about the Belmont Arts Collaborative. Um, it is a performing arts venue and creative space that um, I helped to found in 2017. If you're familiar with the old Seville Market in yes. Belmont, you'll know exactly where it is. So we converted um, a, basically a space that had really just walls into a black box theater that seats about 100 people. And next door is a space with several rehearsal studios. So um, it is the resident home to DMR Adventures, which is a performing arts academy that I also run. She's but busy more than that, <laughs> Yeah, yes, I am. But more than that, the, the Belmont Arts Collaborative, we call it the BAC, it's home to lots of other arts organizations and artists and educators as well. So when things are normal and we're there in person, you might find acting classes, you might find um, the UVA Aerial Dance Company rehearsing in one space while there's kids taking a voice class in another space or um, a new work, like a, a new piece of theater that's being rehearsed in another space or maybe so an after school cool. program in another space. So that's what it's like when things are normal. But unfortunately, as you know, performing arts, um, venues and companies many of them have had to completely shut down including ours so we've been closed since March 13th and um, we are just finally deciding it's time to start a big fundraiser Yay. so we're um, we're starting a fundraiser it's called the BAC believe in the BAC campaign and um, it has a few components the first is we're hoping that everyone who's ever been involved which is many people in our community and beyond will reach out and post videos about why they love the Belmont Arts Collaborative and why it's so needed in our community. Yeah. Um, and But the other two parts are really fun and exciting. Um, we Tell started everything, <laughs> yes. Yes. So there's a rock paint-a-thon. So if you're familiar with, like, pledging for someone to, let's say, um, run a race, like if you pledge, let's say, like, a dollar for every lap they run, this is a really similar concept. So we're using what already exists outside the BAC, which are these beautiful rocks. And we're encouraging um, artists to sign up to paint these rocks. Well, so do you we know, I know a very brilliant artist who is sitting across from me, Jamie. <laughs> I'm going to get a rock. Go, I'm going to get so many rocks. Up. So you can, you can become an artist or you can pledge and donate for our rock artists and we already have about 15 artists signed up uh, i think our youngest is seven years old up to adults so okay, jamie um, you be the artist i'll be the pledger <laughs> okay that sounds like a good idea for me <laughs> i'm gonna do it we'll do a rock we'll do it we'll do a few rocks we should do a few rocks we're gonna we, we'll do all we the should rocks do several rocks all the and rocks the, so the fun thing is we're raising money. We're getting people inspired to create art, which is what we do. Yeah. And um, you can get involved in any age and also any level. So you can, um, you can do any kind of painting technique you want on these rocks. You could, you could do some I Love Seville rocks, which would be really fun. Yeah. And um, the rocks will stay and live outside the Belmont Arts Collaborative. Aww. So when we finally are able to go back in person, the idea is that it's really going to um, be a beautiful space that the whole community feels engaged in. That's amazing. So how do we do it? How do we get a rock? Do I just so, come and grab a rock? Do I sign up well, on the website? What do I do? Yeah. Yes. You can find all the information on our website at belmontarts.org. Okay. And... From there, you can um, give your testimonial about why you love the BAC, or you can sign up for this rock paint-a-thon. You can sign up as a painter, or you can sign up to pledge um, to or sponsor a painter on that site. Um, all the instructions are there. And then on September 12th, we will be having a huge rock concert 
um, at the BAC. We will have some live performances, but um, they're going to be live streamed. So we won't have an audience, but we'll have live performances from broad from Broadway actors to local musicians. So we're wow, really excited. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do this. Um, Panera Bread will sponsor you, Jamie, the artist, to paint some rocks. Thanks, there you go. Now Panera you got another artist bread? and another pledge. All right. Maybe I could, could you sponsor my rock costume? <laughs> I dress up like a big rock and I come out. Oh my, I have a good idea, Melissa. Have you ever heard me sing? No. I no, love no, Melissa. to sing to Kelly. No, Melissa. Love. So maybe I could perform no one, at the no. concert. And I could dedicate they would a song lose to money, you. Jamie. I they would lose money, Jamie. People would ask for their money back. But Melissa, thank you so much for being on. We are going to post <laughs> all the information on our Facebook page, on our Instagram, um, on our website. So if you are interested in participating, and supporting this awesome yes, local um, community business and community arts. I love um, it. You can find all the information on there. So, Melissa, thank you, thank Melissa, you. Thank you so much. We are excited to sponsor and paint these rocks and be a part of what you're doing. We love it. Oh, We're so excited. Thank you so much. And I'm going to send you, like, the first draft of my song no. so you can check that out, okay? okay? <laughs> Melissa, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Everyone visit her website and get your rock on. Yeah, do it. Get some rocks. Thanks, girlfriend. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. I love she that. She is so cute. Yeah. I love it. That's good. Okay. You paint the rocks and Panera Bread will sponsor will sponsor you to paint some. But you can't paint like a hundred. Okay. Like like pick a few. I wish Panera Bread would give me some bagels because I'm so hungry with this I keto diet. I do know diet. somebody who can get you bagels. Oh, I'm so hungry with this keto diet. Um, Fun facts about keto. I learned how to make these Parmesan crisps. You learned? So, well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I you told me I put a pile of cheese... <laughs> A, a big blob of cheese on the thing, and yeah. I put it in the oven, and it melted, and it got crunchy, so I ate the whole thing. It was really, really was good. Lush. But so as we're getting into these product reviews, I want to tell you about uh, these wisps or cheese crips or whatever. Yeah. What a rip. A complete <laughs> ripoff. Jamie doesn't like that. $6.19 for five. So I told you that the first day, I get it from Wegmans, and I got a bag, and I was like, oh, this will be great. And I opened it. There were like three in there. It's like a potato chip bag. So I immediately <laughs> dumped the whole thing into my mouth and ate the whole thing. I was like, oh, I wonder how many carbs that was. And I turned over. It's like three servings in that bag. I a was bazillion like, oh, hell carbs? No. A ton of carbs? A ton of I No. I'm not. Wisps or cheese crisps or whatever you are. $6.19 right. canceled. Canceled? So you made your own. you. Well, yes, but now I made my own. It's so much che cheaper, and I feel like it's a yeah. lot bigger. Stephanie Rhodes, thank you for liking and sharing the show. We will be sending you a book. So we're going to message all of you Ugh. who like and share the show. We so appreciate it. The we're going to send us your address if you DM us. Send us your address. We will make sure to get you a book. If we don't hear from you, we will message you and ask for your address. Um, okay, so let's get to some products, Jamie, because people love that, and I like saying it. Oh, first, let's do sponsors. Thank you, Panera Bread. Um, Go to Panera. This is the perfect day to go to Panera on this rainy, cold day. Get soup and a bread bowl. Jamie, you cannot have the bread bowl, but you still can have the soup. Soup and I a bread I recommend bowl. all of the soups. Okay, soup and a bread bowl is my favorite. When I go to Panera, like pre-keto, I get soup and a bread bowl and then a side of bread to dip in my bread bowl. Does anyone do that? I mean, Tell me in the comments if you do that. <laughs> I don't want to. See, right. when you have the bread bowl in here, you don't want to start ripping apart your whole bowl so the soup falls no, out. No, but see, the point is then you, like, the inside bread okay. gets soggy, and then you scoop that with your spoon. So in your bite, you're getting soup with I bread. I know, but. That's how I do it, too. But Jerry you, says that's how he does if it. If you get a side of a baguette, because you always know I go side baguette, no apple, I dip the crunchy bread into the soup, and it's delicious, and then I have my bowl, that my edible bowl that I can eat later. <laughs> okay. okay. An Let's, edible bowl is freaking genius, by I the mean, way. Have you ever thought about that is genius? I don't know. Rick. Rick Was that Rick? We because know you're watching. Did I mean, you think of it? No, I didn't think of that. Do you know what my dad did, though? He what? did create... The number one selling bagel at Panera Bread. He what? created the Cinnamon Crunch Bagel. The We're going to have him on Cocktail Hour, and he will tell you. He also helped create, I think, the chili from Wendy's. Stop Bam. It. Is it Wendy's? Well, I mean, he, Rick's a man, but we can have him on Cocktail Hour. Yeah. Rick. We're going to do cocktail hour this week. I want to hear, he, he says, he has all these crazy stories about traveling around the world and he's always been in restaurants and things he's created and people he's met. He would be fascinating. Does he like dad, sweets? Dad, put on a wig and then we could interview you. Maybe. Does he like sweets? My dad? No, he's, yeah. he's a marathon runner. He's 71 know, years old. So I wonder how this He's like running marathons crunch, around the world. Cinnamon Crunch came to be. Well, no, he'll tell you that story because it happened. I won't, I don't want to ruin the story. Okay. okay. Let's get into products. No, Picasso Swig and I want, what are you doing? Um, what are we talking about? Your art academy? Yeah. 
Oh, quickly, give me a quick rundown. Of course, I didn't know what was going on. No, we're doing sponsors. Who is that? Is that me? (laughs) I didn't know what was happening. I was like, are you talking about... No, we're doing sponsors. Quick rundown. Uh, Picasso Swig. So we started a new art academy. Um, So all school-age kids, like you can sign on. We're doing it virtually or you can do a take-home box. So, um, Rory, my daughter is doing it. Yeah, PicassoSwig.com. Check out all the academy. They're pretty cool. They're jam packed with a ton of stuff. It's not like a, a weird Zoom class where you're like, everyone learn to draw this no, thing. It's going to be fun. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Denise Ramey, she is on fire. Yeah. I was looking at her Facebook page because we're friends on Facebook, so it yeah. comes up. She's on fire selling houses. She also know, has busy, um, some awesome houses for sale. So if you are trying to sell your house and it is not selling, Denise. Switch over to Denise. If yeah. you're thinking about putting your house on the market, call Denise. If you want to buy a house, I'm She's telling great. you, she is the best. Straight shooter. You will love her. Great. I vouch for her a thousand percent. Um, and what's up with Panera? Where, where, uh, we just did Panera. I know. Well, you're, we about your bread bowl? Yes. <laughs> okay, let's go to products. Okay, so... She's, um, she's very bossy Judah, can today. you give us, like, the she's studio very, cam so people can see this, please? Okay, bossy. so this is my diffuser. Am I even here anymore? Does anyone hear me? This is my diffuser. Is anyone here anymore? Um... I use user. it at can home. You, can you see this, Judah? Okay, so it's plugged in. It Here, look. Okay, also, bring it closer, Kelly. Okay, I'll bring it closer to me. Okay. I love this. I have four of them in my house, in different spots in my house. Kelly, okay. we're running late. It's okay. We're okay. just going to run a little late. Okay, a little late. Don't worry. Okay, so this is my diffuser. All okay. you do is, like, take this pot thing. Uh-huh. Um, you fill it with some water. Mm-hmm. You put this thing back on. Oh, that's why it's leaking. I don't have the top off. Um... You put some of this essential oil. This is Young Living. I am not promoting Young Living. I am just saying essential oils. Yeah, okay. But I use Young Living. You like that? Oh, Jerry to the rescue. Jerry has a top. That looks like a... uh, You put the top on. Oh, that's better. That is better. Hold on. But you know what? So look, okay. So then you put the oils in and you push on. Okay. And all of this like magnificent smelling Oh, I see it now. Yeah. So I'm using peppermint. Because I was a little stuffy from my Ooh. allergies, cleared up my sinuses a really? thousand percent, and then it has mood lighting. You can change. <gasps> what? The color you didn't tell me that. Of your diffuser. So like, yeah. So <gasps> do it again. Want, do it again. So like, you know, going with the decor of your home, like what? Sexy time. Judah. Right. Yes. Sexy time. Like, Judah, can you cut to Avicii? Do it again. <laughs> dun, 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 right? Dun, dun. Isn't that so great? So, I like, the green is nice. I love it. This is my favorite one. I run it all night in my kids' you bedrooms, do. in my bedrooms, in my kitchen. Um, they, like, they have a stress-relieving one. Like, flavors really? that help like, people with anxiety. What is or it? Like, if your kid is virtual learning, I am telling you. Put on the diffuser. Get a diffuser. Put in, like, the stress-relieving smell. They have lavender. They have all these things. But it's also, I don't know. I dig it. How much is this thing? Is I don't expensive? know. I mean, you can get them from any brand. I'm oh, not sponsoring okay. a brand. I mean, I guess I right. am. Okay. Young Living, a girlfriend of mine and my mother-in-law sent it to me. Super cool. I love that. I think people people sell it individually. A lot of women <laughs> are like selling this. Anyway, I dug it. I liked it. It's cold Guys, and rainy. Kelly, so this thing started to leak before. Because we I didn't put the top on No, right. I know. But the best part was is if you take this apart and you see the water inside, it bubbles up yeah. and it looks like the Bellagio. So I said to Jerry, I go, oh my God, look, it's like a little Bellagio in the bottle. So if you put on the music, you have a mini Bellagio next to your bed. That's so funny. But I do. I recommend it. I really like mine. I like it. Um, okay. Kendra Scott. Yes. I love her jewelry so much. Thank you. Yes. Um, she used to have a shop here in Charlottesville. But she now did. I think she's back in New York, yeah. I think. Um, anyway. Kendra, where? Kendra went to the big yeah. city. So look at this amazing necklace I got from her store. That's so it's beautiful. Cute. I love it. You can wear it with anything. Her jewelry is beautiful and amazing. So if you are doing maybe some early shopping, maybe for the holidays. So guys, I'd if you're her site. if you're listening on iTunes to this podcast and you can't see, so Kelly is wearing it's like this really cute necklace and it's like it looks like it's made of like glass. It is glass. Um, and it's this green glass. It's like a pendant. It's beautiful. Um, gold chain. It's really, really gorgeous. I think uh, Kendra says she does a really great job. I am a... Uh, I like that. That's really beautiful. You should wear that more often. Yeah. Oh, hey, we, thank you. I am going to wear it more often. Um, Alex Butterfield just sent us his um, address. We He is super excited to... Are you making book. us lunch? Oh, woman, thank you. Are you making us lunch? What? What? The address. Oh, for the book. For Alex. The book. Alex, I thought you were making Alex, us thank lunch. thank you, Alex. You are going to love this book, Alex. 
It, she's an amazing lady climber. I hope you enjoy it. We are going to get it into the mail to you ASAP. Um, okay, Jamie, what do you have for okay, me? So check this out. All right, I have two products today. Can we keep any of it? Uh, yes. This is actually all mine. <laughs> like, oh. I own this stuff. Oh, okay. So, so, this so is I like, can't have it. But no, you can have it. You can try it. But so, anyway, so you know I'm trying to get away from the chemicals. Blah, blah. Oh, here we go. Oh, essential oils. They're three. Uh, this is perfect. Because I'm super, like, you know, like, super, super healthy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so I've been using this hair care stuff. Okay. Um, it's called 100% Pure. So they make all kinds of stuff, like body wash or shampoo or conditioner. But this is so cool. Um, Ryan uses it too. Um, it's called Honey and Virgin Coconut Restorative Conditioner. It smells so delicious. It's like the bed and it has no chemicals in it. It's made with like um, it. No, I'm so picky. Let me see it. Smell it. Open this. It's, it Let smells me see it. Delicious. And what I do is because, so usually they say, you know, you want to wash your hair first because you don't want, is, like, open, like, twist off the top. Okay. You're going to, I'm tired. I'm very picky on smells, Jane. And, ooh, that smells like. It smells really good. Um, a day in the Bahamas. It's like drinking very, a pina colada. It's deli. It's, like, very that is good. delicious. Right? And then yeah, they have okay, this, like, tree it. tree shampoo that I've been using that I really, really love. But And it's a woman-owned business? It's woman-owned woman business. Um, 100% pure. It's really, really awesome. You guys I liked get it. it. And it's, it, it lasts delicious. forever. So we have a bunch of our shower. It lasts forever. I actually, I need to get new shampoo. Although I dye my hair like with crazy bleach. So there's, I don't know if this is for me, but I'll try it. <laughs> because there's no if chemicals. I come next week with no hair. There's no chemicals in bleach. Okay. Look at this other thing. So I thought this was funny. So as I was getting dressed Because I morning, kind of love that. And when That's what I was my, hoping someone sent so it to us. I got this and um, you can have this. I will give this to you as a gift. Um, you can have this. Um, so this is from Stella and Dot. I love Stella and Dot. Stella and Dot, me too. So I got this a couple of years ago. Um, my friend Lindsay was like doing Stella and Dot, and they did this pre-sale for this bag. And I was like, oh my God. Oh, this way? This way? Oh, thanks, Judah. Judah Jr. here. Do you think that? No, I don't know if that's big enough for my iPad. Well, so this is my thing. So I said, okay, so this was a bag. I've worn it like once. This is when I used to like go on the downtown mall and like bar hop. And I was like, <laughs> check out Miss Stella and Dot. I'm at the Biltmore. Like all that. But now it's just been sitting in my closet as I get fatter. Um, so anyway, so I looked at this, but wouldn't this be the cutest iPad holder? Yes. So then I was like, I wonder if my iPad could fit. Because then I'm like, now I'm like an even bougier like adult. I'm like, yes. Flipped over to Stella and Dot. Like business. <laughs> Citizen Burger Bar. I was like, this is so versatile. Right. But then I continued. All this happened in my closet, by the way. <laughs> in the five minutes I'm in my closet. A wall hanging. Okay. So that's, that's pushing it. What if it... What? Actually, do you know what, though? No. I am going to take a picture. I do have something very similar to that Look, are you on kidding? in my bedroom on my wall. I'm not kidding. What is Hold falling on, out of okay, your bag? Okay, this is the last time I wore this. This is great. This is the Brewer's Ball. <laughs> what? <laughs> For cystic fibrosis. <laughs> So 2017. Oh, okay. That's the last time I partied when I was like out. I was 2017. I was like, Bruce Ball, hell yeah. And I still, it's still in my bag. But okay, so wall hanging. Yes. Or Kelly, check this out. What? In your student's room, it's like, here, put your assignments. It's like hanging on the wall. Okay, I think you're getting too creative. I think iPad, pocket part. Was it mm -hmm. a pocket, a pocket, what do they call that? Pocket? Like a? Pocket purse? Pocket I pack? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, guess so, what? Still I way. am going to do... The funny things today. Okay, wait, but before we do this and before oh, okay. we end, because I know we're, we're not running that late. We're only a minute late. I, know, I want to just quickly just go line. back to the news and say this week it was announced that um, all of these people, it was very serious, they, at this <laughs> nudist colony, got COVID. So the nudist colony, they came down with COVID, and they now implemented this thing. They were like, we're going to have to ask you to wear a mask. And, and pants? Maybe, maybe pants? But a lower mask? <laughs> you know, your lower mask is not required. But when I was reading on the nudist, like there was like a trip advisor for the nudist colony. Do you know that it says the nudist colony attracts 35,000 visitors every summer? That doesn't surprise me. So my husband and I went on vacation, I think to in Jamaica or the Bahamas. Uh, did you go to this nudist colony? No, but so our hotel was next to this other hotel. No, really? Yes. And it was like a nudist swingers no! hotel <laughs> we didn't know that when we were booking it so like we're there we like always plan like the really early flight so we can have kind of like the extra first day yeah i'm like in our swimsuits we're lounging on the beach we're in one no. of those butler suites you know where the butler like brings you all the yeah. things to like the beach and all of a sudden i see this very old man and this very young lady walking <laughs> down the beach 
together in matching what I would not consider swimsuits. Oh my God, really? I mean, pretty much naked. So when they leave their resort and walk down the beach, they're required to put on something. So and what did they, and they just like... I mean, nothing was left to the imagination with the clothing they chose to walk down the beach. Did they so use then we their became Stella? Fascinated. They're still... Yeah. In- no, so I was like trying to convince Adam. I'm like, oh my gosh, Adam, like... Everyone else is doing it. No. So every day, this old, very old man and this very young, beautiful lady would come walking down the beach a couple times a day, every day, matching thongs. That's it. Only thongs. And the other but question I have. These. Do you that, think... We are off point now. Oh, maybe Rhonda could tell us this. So if you're at the nudist colony, I'm sure it's like an all-inclusive resort, right? That you're just nude at. Yeah. When you go into the restaurant... I think do you're you still sit, nude. Do you sit there nude? Spill soup. You're in, you're in like bad luck. What if you drop <laughs> your steak? You're like, ah, ah, honey, we have to go. The night is and over. It would be very distracting if you were there with someone else, like trying to have a nice dinner and like someone really good looking walks by. That's a very, yeah. And you're like, and your husband, like, excuse me. And then, you, I, then I bet they're not like, oh, that's a great sun hat. Where'd you get that? They're like, those are some great boobs. Where'd you pick up those? You, yeah, you can't, you can't right? compliment someone on their non I think you have to. I yeah, mean, is can. it rude not to compliment? What kind of compliments would be appropriate? Or And then is it weird? Like, what if you're like, okay, I picture like a hallway like of a cruise ship. Like, what if you're like in a small hallway and you're just like, uh, excuse, elevator? excuse well, I mean, me, <laughs> excuse me. Like, do you brush by people? I don't know. Do you face to the back? I don't know. What's I don't know. the proper protocol? I don't know. If anyone there is like a nudist or goes to like these nudist resorts, like hit yeah. us up. Like we have, we have questions. We have answers. Yeah. I mean, I have more inappropriate questions that yeah. I could not say on this air. If you spill soup on yourself, like tell us. I want. If you've dropped soup on yourself in a nudist colony, I want to. We know. have really gone downhill. We <laughs> had this amazing interview. Then we had a second amazing interview. Now we're talking about private parts. Um, 20, at, a, at a nudist colony. Twenty five minutes ago, I was crying with Joanna, like almost in tears, crawled up in my sweater. And now I just want to know if you spilled soup in your pants. Okay. Well, now we don't have time for funny, so I'm going to save the funny till next week because I want to tell everyone you thought our interview today was amazing because it really was. Jamie, who do we have on next week? Oh Minds God. are okay. going to be blown. Like true crime fanatics, you will have to tune in. You will want to like and share the show immediately. You will not want to miss a minute. Oh, my God. Basically, the whole show is going to be the interview. Oh. Um, Jerry, prepare for a long show. Yes. Uh, um, Rabia from the Undisclosed podcast. So if you remember the podcast Serial. Um, Serial was about, it's a true crime story about um, Adnan Syed, who was convicted of murdering his, at that time, his ex-girlfriend. Right. And he was sentenced to prison, so he was sentenced to life in prison. And um, so Serial from NPR, they followed his whole story and like talked to Adnan and his family. But Rabia Chaudhry was Adnan's family. They were like a friend of the family. And she brought the attention to his story, to NPR, and that's how kind of serial came to be. But Rabia um, wrote a book. She has her... Um, a, a New York Times bestseller. New York Times bestseller. She did her own podcast. She, okay, do you know she has two podcasts? Guess how... She has over 300 million listeners of her podcasts. <laughs> Three... What? I don't... Is that, is that... How many people even live in the United States? Is that like everybody in the United States is listening she to this? She is fascinating. Three hundred weeks. So more people have listened to her podcast, yeah. than live in the United States. She, so her book is amazing. The book is amazing, and she did a four part series documentary on HBO that is right. on HBO now. If you don't have time to listen to the podcast or read the book before the show, I know you're doing nothing but sitting on your couch really anyway. Watch the documentary. Watch the documentary. It's amazing. And Robbie is incredible. So Robbie is a lawyer. Um, she's been fighting, you know, for justice for Adnan, both Adnan and Hay, for all these years. Um, she's going to catch us up on what's happening with Adnan, what's next. Send us, um, I know you guys, all you crime junkies out there. Yes. All you serial podcast lovers. Yes. Send us questions ahead of time because we're already starting to get questions. And if you don't get in sending us questions, yeah. we might not get to them. It's yeah. first come, first serve we on these questions. You want to know, like, ask the question. Like, if you listen to this serial, you're going to want to know what was up with Jay. What was up with Jay? What was up with Jay? What Liar. was up with Don? Yeah. What's happening with that guy, which is like the weirdest thing ever. Um, you're going to want to know about how they knew how the car was at the park and ride. I mean, you guys have to dive into this podcast. Serial was the most widely downloaded podcast in history. Yeah. Like literally in history. To this day, it was so popular worldwide. 
Yes. And Rabia is incredible, um, super down to earth, and just super like interested in You're like getting love the her. and keeping you know keeping Adnan's name out there. So until he comes home, yes. And we eat, every week we are getting so many great guests. So um, if you have anybody that you think would be great for the show, yeah, let us know. Like us on Instagram. Um, yes. We're going to start to try and do some uh, Instagram live things for our cocktail hours. Right. We'll put something on our Facebook page when we're going to do our cocktail hours this week. I'm thinking Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Wednesday would be Wednesday, good. Wednesday, I think we'll do a cocktail hour. We'll let you know ahead of time. Like and share the show, please. Like and share um, the show. Tell your friends so about it. So many likes and shares today. We truly appreciate it. Um, I am Kelly. Yeah. I am Jamie. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you live next Monday at 10.15. Yeah. Keep changing the world, guys. Bye, guys. Ciao. (laughs) That was such a fun, exciting interview. Oh, I loved those interviews. I know. I'm so excited for next week. I am obsessed with the cereal.